video two on the Tecumseh Snow King snowblower. I decided to try to resurface this crank here. I, I can find uh, good used ones on the internet for $60 US, $75 US, but uh, I don't want to put too much money into this old snowblower I got for free. I got a brand new connecting rod coming in, $16. And this here, I'm going to take the grooves out. I'm going to polish them right out, and I've already got them half out already now. And uh, I went to Harbor Freight and bought some of this uh, strip sandpaper. I think it was $4.99 for a pack of, uh, I think there was five of them. And uh, 80 grit, 120, 180, 240. I'm at the, uh, I'm at the 180 right now. And I've got all the grooves out of it. There's no more grooves in that journal. Like, it, it's smooth now. So now it's just a matter of going with the 240, and then I'm going to polish it, and it'll be like chrome. When I get the rod, I'll plastic gauge it. I'll put some plastic gauge in there, make sure I got a... Not too much clear. If it's slopping around, bang, I need a new I need a new rod. But this, like I say, this snow machine was like brand new. There couldn't have been two hours on this uh, snow blower. So I, I know this rod was like virtually brand new before it got scored so even if I took a thou off it of course I don't think I'm even capable of with sandpaper but um, I just want to get the all the highs all the ridges highs and lows get all the highs smoothed out if there's low spots in the crank that's not going to hurt anything that's not going to hurt nothing it's just the highs so uh, I'm gonna finish buffing this some more here Just keep rotating the crank around every couple minutes. Make sure I get equal pressure all the way around. It's starting to get pretty shiny now. This is 180. This might take a half hour altogether to, to go through all the grits, but it's worth it. My grandfather's old vice. It's got to be over 70 years old, 80 years old. Flip it over. I'm going to use some uh, autosol paste. It's a metal polish. Put that on there first. A little bit on the paper. This is the fine grit paper. And that uh, polish will kind of plug up the grains in the paper to start. And then I'll go to a cloth. Boring. Hey, come on, let's go. Let's get to work. Come on. Come on, Raven. Let's go, come on. Good boy. Okay, got the new connecting rod. Got the crank polished up. Uh, 
came out really good. I, I didn't think I'd be able to save that, but uh, that looks pretty good to me. I'm going to see how the rod fits on there. First thing though, first thing, if I can find it, right there. I'm going to try to get that key out. Bang it out of there. Take my punch first. See how the connecting rod is going to fit. Just taking the wrist pin clip out, and uh, there's a little slot right here where you can pry it, but sometimes it doesn't line up, so you can just take some needle nose pliers, just turn it a little bit so you can pry it up. And then right in here, I always put my thumb over to catch it in case it goes flying out, you lose it. There you go. Just pops out like that. Then I try to find a socket that's smaller than this diameter to, to press it through. Check the uh, connecting rod onto the crank, and, and it's nice and snug. No real free play at all. There's side to side play, that's normal, but it's the pulling play that's nice and snug. But <clears throat> nothing's perfect in this world. And uh, I didn't notice this when I took it apart, but that when that connecting rod let go, I guess last winter. <clears throat> It went through the case. Look at that, nice big hole there. And there it is there. But I'm gonna patch this up. I don't have a TIG welder. You know, I got this uh, snowblower for free, I'm just sitting on the curb with a free sign on it. And uh, I've got a trick to fix this. In the crankcase, it only holds a half a liter of oil, so it probably only sits to about, maybe down to here with oil. And the crank splashes in the oil. So it's not sitting in oil. It doesn't have to be perfect. What I use is this two part panel, a bond, uh, panel bonding epoxy. And if you need a special gun for it, I got it here somewhere. Yeah. This is one type of gun. This is probably a $250 uh, panel bonding gun. They, they make a, a little bit cheaper one that's uh, made of plastic and it's still about 160 bucks. But uh, I got this from a buddy. I've had it for a while. <laughs> she knows I have it. <laughs> so I'm going to use that. I'm going to drill a couple little holes in here. Maybe eighth inch, five or six. And so when I put epoxy on the outside and epoxy on the inside that it'll it'll hold each other It'll hold itself together. It can't like pop out on the inside or pop out on the outside. And this epoxy is, I've been using this for years. This stuff is super, super strong. It's meant for bonding metal. They use it in the new Audi cars, the Cadillacs, the Corvettes, uh, BMWs. Uh, they don't spot well the body panels anymore. They use this stuff. And when you glue two pieces of uh, pan uh, um, uh, panels together, like on a car, quarter panels or whatever, and you try to rip it apart, the metal rips before this stuff rips. This stuff is, is really good. It's normally $80 a tube. Uh, out of town here a little ways, I just went out there, it's about 40 kilometers away. They sell it for about 40 bucks a tube because it's a, a no-name, um, it's not a 3M. The 3M product's about $79.99 for a 200 milliliter tube of this stuff. This is called Auto Refinish Products. 
and uh, it basically works the exact same. It's a 90 minute cure time, um, or working time, and then a four hours uh, clamp time, cure 24 hours. So I'm gonna let it sit overnight. But if you uh, use a heat gun with it on low, and you heat it up, and you heat it up, it cures much quicker, and, and it's supposed to be stronger. Um, there was a demonstration at one of the body shops here in town that uh, the, the guy took a heat gun to it, put it on low, and it actually cured quicker and baked harder. It, it worked a lot. They say that it, it really should have heat to it. So that's what I'm doing next. There, drilled a bunch of holes through it. That way it'll be held inside and outside. It'll, it'll form all one piece. I'll blow all the filings out. I'm going to spray a cleaner in all the cracks to get as much oil as I can. I want to get any oil residue at all. And I've already sanded it down in here with a 60 grit um, sandpaper to make it rough for the adhesion. It's a mixing tube. It mixes the epoxy as it's coming out. I'm going to waste the first little bit because I've had a problem before where we didn't mix the first inch, so I'm going to let that come out. Should be Take plastic, um, you know, these plastic gift cards. I always keep them or you get some free ones. Cut this down a little bit better size. Just kind of spread it out evenly. I want to squish it into those holes. big hole there. How many glasses on? I can't see. I'll get back. So I'm just going to put this uh, spotlight or heat lamp on it. That keeps it nice and warm in here. Nice and hot. And uh, we'll just let that bake on there for a few hours. And it should harden up after a couple hours. At least they're going to get everything else assembled. Okay, that's where I'm at. I, I was going to do this in a two-part series. <laughs> it looks like it's going to be a three-part series to finish this snowblower.